Welcome to Unit 7 of OnlinePHPClass.com and in this unit we're going to talk about MySQL. So why MySQL? Well, MySQL is a database and from a database perspective you have to have a place to store your dynamic data. You can use flat file storage, though databases allow for easy management and access of data. Uh, in addition, um, databases help from a performance perspective. MySQL is free and open source and is a database solution that works rather well. And I have here a note, as we've talked about uh, several times already, the LAMP stack, Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP, which is what we're talking about in this course. Now we, I want to talk about PHP MyAdmin and first of all what it is. PHP MyAdmin, um, the name of PHP MyAdmin can be broken down to three parts, PHP, My, and Admin. Uh, PHP because it's a set of PHP scripts, My for MySQL, and Admin because of its function to administer MySQL using PHP. There's also a Postgres version, uh, I don't exactly remember its name, I think it's PHP PG admin or something like that um, that is used to administer Postgres. PHP MyAdmin will help you save time, increase efficiency, increase accuracy, and is very easy for beginners while providing complex operations for experienced DBAs. So uh, we will be using PHP MyAdmin in this course. PHP MyAdmin is already installed with XAMPP and you can download it from the web for regular installations. It's an open source uh, product and project. So for open source and uh, for regular installations you can download it and install it. Uh, here's a note. Although this is not a course in detailed database design, I want to provide you with an acronym a professor once taught me for when building database driven applications, which is what we are doing. And the acronym is CRUD, which stands for Create, Read, Update, Delete. In fact, uh, the professor who taught it to me says that they're, they typically don't teach it anymore. It seems to be an outdated acronym, but yet he still teaches it because it's very, very relevant. And I use it all the time because it helps me translate to insert, select, update, and delete from a MySQL perspective. Meaning, whenever we're building a database-driven application, we should have the ability to create rows um, and put data into the database. Uh, read the data from the database, update the data in the database, and delete the data from the database. So that keeps me on task when I'm building my use cases and whatnot for uh, the database-driven application. Now I'm going to dive right into some of the MySQL uh, functions. Okay, So to open or reuse a connection to a MySQL server, the function from PHP is MySQL underscore connect. And as you can see, it's um, fairly got a lot of um, options you can pass it as well as default parameters. It returns a resource, which is a connection resource, and notice that all of the options are optional. In fact, if you don't pass any option, MySQL Connect will attempt to use um, a connection that was already established. So the first um, parameter is the server and it defaults to what you specify in your php.ini. In your php.ini you can specify the default MySQL server, default MySQL username, and default MySQL password. So you have the first parameter being the server, the second parameter being the username, third parameter being the password, and the first fourth parameter being a boolean for a new link, and the fifth parameter being client flags. I typically don't use new link or client flags um, if you pass it the server, the username and the password, you should be okay. Um, keep in mind that the server is any kind of, uh, I mean, it, it can be an NS, uh, I was going to say an NS lookup name, but basically it can be a DNS entry. So you can put the name of the physical server if it can be resolved from the server that, you're, that your MySQL server is on. Um, you can put an IP address. A lot of times you'll use my uh, local host. I know for GoDaddy hosting accounts, um, typically it's not localhost. Typically, there's a very specific database server that they have set up that they give you. Uh, so keep that in mind. You just specify that, and it's the username and password for the database. So we're going to actually have to create um, a database and uh, user and password privileges so that you can utilize them, and then that's what goes into the connect string. 
The second bullet point mentions that there's also a MySQL underscore pconnect, which is available if you want the connection to persist when the script exits. That should say exits, not exists. Um, it uses the same syntax. So basically, um, when your script terminates, the PHP script terminates, the MySQL connection will terminate as well if you just use MySQL underscore connect. If you want the script, uh, the connection to persist, use MySQL underscore pconnect. Just make sure you have to close, you have to handle closing the connection. Otherwise, there's a limit on the number of persisting connections and uh, you end up reaching that limit rather quickly. Although I began by using MySQL underscore pconnect, uh, a little bit of further research indicated that I could just still get by with MySQL underscore connect because MySQL underscore connect will not, will not, see there's a misconception. Some people think that MySQL underscore connect will establish a new connection every time it's called. That's not true. If you pass it the same server uh, username and password information, it will actually go out and see if it has an existing connection to that server. And if it does, it'll utilize that. So typically, that's how I do it. I have an include file for database connectivity, and I include it. And then maybe the file that I'm, the script that I'm executing includes another file. Well, if that include the file that's being included also sources in the database functions and, co and connection uh, function, then it'll still, it'll use the exact same connection, I'm not spawning additional connections. So to me, it's a way to have the same connections be utilized and at the same time have those connections terminate when the script terminates, be it a legitimate termination from, you know, expected code or an exception that terminates the script. Either way, uh, the connection then terminates. So I tend to use MySQL underscore connect at this point. Next we have MySQL underscore select underscore DB and that function is used to select the database after connecting to the MySQL server. So basically what you'll do is you'll connect to the MySQL server, select the database, and then issue queries against it. And this function returns a boolean and you pass it the database name as well as the link identifier or the resource which is the return from the MySQL underscore connect. You do have to pass it a database name that is required. The resource is not. If you don't pass it a database name it'll go out and look for an existing MySQL resource. And I believe it uses the last resource um, that it found. I typically don't open multiple connections on multiple databases. I typically don't need to do that um, from a MySQL perspective. So uh, typically if I don't specify the resource, it's just going to use the last, uh, it's going to use the one that I opened because I only opened one. Uh, okay. Next we have MySQL underscore query. MySQL underscore query allows you to run a MySQL query. Pretty straightforward there. You can manipulate the database structure this way as long as the user has access. So you can automate database operations. Um, basically, like I said, you'll open a connection to a MySQL server, you'll select a database, and you'll run queries against it. This is as if you're running any kind of query against MySQL. It's literally the way to connect PHP to MySQL from a query perspective. So if you're creating tables, you can do that through here as well. Uh, a lot of times you'll be doing you know, inserts, updates, deletes, that kind of thing. If you actually do uh, table ac table manipulations like creates and alters and, and drops and that kind of thing, you can do that too. Uh, any type of MySQL query, you can uh, you can pass through MySQL underscore query. So it returns a resource, and you pass it the query string, as well as uh, or as well as optionally the link identifier, which is the the MySQL connection. Um, keep in mind that actually, yes, I was going to say from a when you do a select DB, you're literally selecting the database for that particular connection. So and the reason why you don't have to pass it the database name here, and the reason why the select DB does not actually return a resource, is because by doing the select DB, you're it's as if you're changing the connection to say, okay, not only is this connected to this MySQL server, it's also pointing to this database. So that's why you're just passing it the connection resource identifier. And the query string here can be, you know, a string that says select star from table name, you know, where table name is the name of the table, that kind of thing. And you'll get a MySQL query 
result um, resource value back. Now we'll talk about different functions that you can do with the MySQL resource uh, that comes back from MySQL underscore query. You can do MySQL underscore num underscore rows, which will allow you to get the number of rows in the result set. It returns an integer, and you pass it the resource, the, re the result resource, which comes from MySQL underscore query. So I just want to just point out, so basically, if we go back to MySQL underscore query, an example would be um, dollar $QR for query result equals mysql underscore query open paren, you know, quote, select star from table name, end quote, close paren, semicolon. Then from here you can do dollar uh, $NR for num rows equals mysql underscore num underscore rows open paren dollar uh, $QR, close paren, semicolon and you'll get the number of rows that that particular select query returned. And I have a note that says this particular function only works on the command on on the wait, this only works of the command usually select returns a re if I should say if the command. This only works if the command returns a result set. My apologies um I don't know what happened with these slides. Um but anyway, this only works uh if the command usually select returns a result set. If you want to determine how many rows were affected using insert update delete, use mysql underscore affected underscore rows. Okay. Um, so in the function for mysql underscore affected underscore rows is the exact same, except you don't actually have to pass it a resource link identifier um, because it'll just use the open connection. Okay. Now we'll talk about different ways you can get the data from the MySQL result that comes from MySQL underscore query. One way is to use MySQL underscore result, which from php.net says retrieves the contents of one cell from a MySQL result set. I use this function when I want to return counts or one cell, so in other words one row column pair from a MySQL uh, database. B what I mean by counts is a lot of times um, I might do like select count open paren star close paren from such and such a table where such and such. Okay, then I'll get the, the there will only be one row and one cell returned. One row, one column, which is one cell returned. So I'll use MySQL underscore result to get that value. Because it's much more efficient if you're just getting one particular cell. MySQL underscore result returns a string. You pass it the result resource as well as the row and ultimately the field. So if I just want row 0, uh, field 0, I'll pass it 0, comma 0. With, um, and the field can be is, a, is of a mixed type, I believe, because you can, in addition, pass it the column name. Um, so it can be a string or an integer. It's basically why it's of a mixed type. All right, minus go underscore fetch underscore row. Using for each in mysql underscore num underscore rows, we can use mysql underscore fetch underscore row to increment through an enumerated array where the array represents columns and each cell to mysql underscore fetch underscore row sets the array to a row. Basically, this function returns a row, a mysql row from your result set. What it, it returns it from in the form of an array and you pass it the result resource. So the array that you get back, the indexes of the array, uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, etc., represent the columns in that particular row. So you increment through calling mysql fetch underscore row, mysql underscore fetch underscore row, to get the different rows. And then uh, by doing that, you have an array, and you can check the columns. You then check the columns in that particular row. Okay. Just it's okay if it's a little out there right now. Um, I'll be showing you some examples as we do the demo. You also have mysql underscore fetch underscore soak. And this fetches the results as an associative array. Okay, this is nice because the indices of the array are the column names of the database table. So whereas mysql underscore fetch underscore row, the indices are numbers representing the actual column number, this is uh, using fetch underscore soak, you get the indices being the column names. 
so that say if you added a column into the middle of a database table you wouldn't have to change your all your fetch underscore rows um, you just you're calling it by column name so you know that that's all this that's all fetch underscore soak does mysql underscore fetch underscore array on the other hand gives you the option to pick one or the other or both you can fetch the row as a numeric array associative array um, where the index of the array is the column name or both um, if I ex if I expect the number of columns to be you know fairly reasonable um, I'll use the result type equal mysql underscore both and the reason why is by doing that I actually double the size of the array I get returned and because what will happen is in the array there are uh, indices representing uh, indices of integers representing the columns and there are in indices of strings representing the column names um, so I can actually reference the column in any which way I want if I use mysql, under fetch, MySQL underscore fetch underscore array I want to briefly talk about SQL injection again remember when you put user provided text in a SQL command the data must be sanitized so always use string val in val and the sanitize functions provided in the last lesson against all request data every time user provided data is being used in the script you gotta be very very careful because if you took a user uh, variable so like uh, if you took you know dollar underscore get um, ID and you took that and put it in your select statement if something you do select star from people where ID equals dollar underscore get ID um, anybody can then force in what they want into that SQL statement so you could do where ID equals you know zero you know or you know and one equal one <laughs> you know and then you'll get every row so I mean that's just part of SQL injection so you gotta make sure that you sanitize um, you, you gotta sanitize anything that comes from a user um, and you know we talked about that in the last lesson it's just very important alright now it's time for the demo what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a database with uh, PHP MyAdmin sometimes it's abbreviated PMA uh, we will create two tables in PMA one for array lookup data and one for historical entries we will populate the PMA table for lookup data with colors from uh, the array um, f from the array meaning um, from the array that you would have you would have had in your last uh, demo or I'm sorry last exercise where you create an array of colors I'm just going to populate it with a list of colors then what we'll do is I'll show you using PHP how to connect to it how to select a database and how to select data to verify um, that the color was actually there and handling no errors turn and insert items typed into the his history table if it weren't there already um, let me just I want to flip to the exercise slide because I think what you're going to do is this exact same demo except there's one other thing and yes okay so the exercise would be to do the demo plus adding the option to view historical entries uh, in a list Okay so first I'll show you this and then that's why we're going to record that I'm going to show you how to record the historical data and then you'll go through and add how to get the historical data back out okay so creating a data creating a database with PHP my admin all right let's see here creating a database all right um go to browser and as long as it's running, which we turned it on a while ago, as long as it's running, it should come up. What's it? There it goes. All right. Um, create a new database. Online PHP class. Create. Very straightforward to create a database. Now we're going to create two, what's it say, two tables, one for array lookup data and one for historical entries. So what I'll do, um, okay, what I'll do is array lookup data, so I'll say colors. Um, I'm just going to name, let's see, I don't, I'll just 
just make it one field because it's a lookup table, and I'll make the index the lookup value. I mean the the primary key. So the field is color name, and it is a var car variable character. Fifty five. Let me make it the max for now. Uh, no default. Uh, can't be null. Um, let's see. The index primary key, does it let me choose it? It does let me choose it here. Okay, so we'll make it the primary key. And that should be sufficient. Do you want to debug this web page? No. Colors created, um, historical. Now to create another table, I have to go back to the actual database. Click here. Historical. And I don't, I want to have an ID value. I want to have the actual color typed, and um, I'll put a timestamp. Maybe we can make this big. In. I'm just. My main thing is to teach you that how to use PHP to connect to MySQL. Um, not so much the MySQL components. If you're interested more in, if you're interested in addition to MySQL stuff, um, post some post that information in the form, and we'll go from there. All right. So that color. because I think time stands reserved. Um, date time. And we'll make this of type timestamp. And then we will save. Alright, don't show this message again. No. Alright, so created that. Those two tables. Populate with PMA the colors from the array. Okay, so we're going to populate with colors. Insert. Blue. Green. Just do blue, green, and red for now. Okay. All right. Connect the database server. Okay. Now we'll go into editor. All right. Here's our color.php. Connect to the database server. Okay. Con equals MySQL underscore connect. In this case, it is localhost. Um, oh, you know what? I don't have a username and password, do I? Okay, let's do this then. Go to home. Privileges. Add a new user. I could use root, um, but I don't actually want to do that. I want to show you how to how to grant a user here. So username. Online PHP class. I'm from, coming from localhost. Um, I will give you a tip though about this. If you have a, if you have host set to any, my um, experience is if you have it set to any host, that actually excludes localhost because MySQL determines localhost and any host to be different. So if you want somebody to have localhost access as well as to be able to connect to the database from another host, then you have to give them both. Um, so use text field. Um, I'm just going to say OPC. OK. 
Okay. Um, we don't want any users. No global. No. All right. Now what I want to do is if I go into the database. I can then choose privileges specifically for this database. And I want to add. Oops! Wait, it took me back here? That's weird. This might be a different version than the one I'm used to, but anyway. Alright, let me go to global privileges here and choose edit. And I don't want global privileges, I want database specific privileges. And then PHP class. And this is database specific. What I'll do is I'll allow everything. Um, all right. Let's see. We'll grant everything. Now what you have to do is reload from our privileges. There should be a reload. Yeah, this is just a note saying you gotta set up authentication if you really want to go in prod or something like that. Um, there's usually a reload. I think it's kind of is it under server processes? Oops, why did it do that? Processes. Don't know. There's usually a reload, and you kind of need to do that. I mean, I wanted to make sure that if we do have to do it, that we can do it where. You know what I'll do then? I'll just issue a SQL um, flush privileges. It's a good question if it executed. <laughs> um, There you go. All right. So I just did it that way. And that'll guarantee that that it has the username and password and the grant permissions. All right. So uh all right. online php class and the password is uh, opc. All right. Um You could put like or die, if, you know, like or die couldn't connect. And you can do that too if you really wanted to. Um, connect the database server, select the database. Okay. If not, MySQL underscore select underscore DB. Select the database. We did that. Select data to verify lookup handling no res return. All right. Well, before I do that, let me just make sure this works. Okay. Good. Um, this is what this is the way I'll do it. Um, query result equals MySQL underscore query. Uh, select. 
color from what was the name of the oh the database is called or the tables is called colors and the the column is called color underscore name okay so color colors um I'm tempted since the lookup table I'm tempted to build the array and then look up in the array rather than query for the result and see if okay this is what I'll do then I will show you how to query each individual result since we're talking MySQL in this section when you do the exercise do it by getting um, I was gonna say do it by getting an array by building an array of colors reconstructing the array of colors from the items in the MySQL table okay um, so I'll show you individual lookups alright so what we'll do then is we'll only connect to MySQL since I'm going to show it to you this other way I'll only connect to MySQL if we submitted the color alright All right. and Something's wrong. What I forget. So it doesn't look right. Yeah. On line three. Oh. Ha. Ah. That's why. All right. Um. Select color name from colors where now see I didn't sanitize this where and I really should um, I don't like doing it without showing you the sanitizing but make sure you sanitize I just want to get you to understand the 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 PHP to MySQL connectivity in this case. All right, so where color name equals, and if it's a string, put the single quotes. If it's not, you don't need them. Um, in fact, you can't put them if it's an integer in in the database. All right, select color name from colors where color name equals con. Oh, I'm sorry, where color name equals con. Where color name equals bg color. So we're Um, if mysql underscore num underscore all right, you know before I do that, nr equals mysql underscore num underscore rows query results. If my if number of rows is equal to zero, let go. It is not a valid color. Else, if nr equals equals one, PG color. Um, I was going to say if it equals 1 then set it but it will already be set so I just need to handle that so select database to verify handling no rows return inserting items typed to history table if it wasn't there already okay oh okay so if it's not then we're going to insert it into the history table Insert into. Uh, oh wait, it's here. Insert into 
Yeah, I know. Um, Alright, insert into historical. And I gotta know the columns. It's ID, which is... Oh, ID should be set to auto increment. My apologies on that one. So what I actually want to do is edit this. Color and date time. So auto increment attributes. No. 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 Oh, the default should be... Oh. All right, so a couple of changes I got to make to these. Um, auto increment. Usually that's not the way it's listed in my PHP MyMin, but anyway. So auto increment should be on the ID field. Yeah, I don't know why I'm getting these script errors. Anyway. Uh, and date time should default. On update current timestamp. Okay, fine. That's That already handled it for me. So that's fine. All right, good. So historical, and the structure is um, color, which I don't have to specify. ID I don't have to specify because auto increment. Uh, date time I don't have to specify because uh, because MySQL will automatically put in current date and time. And color I do have to specify. So let's see here. So insert into historical. And the column is called color, and the value values is BG color. Uh, another one. Sorry. Close the query, then close the query, then this is really nice that it tells you matching up the the parentheses. Okay. Else add it to the historical table. Close. Alright, if I choose I'm gonna um let's choose purple, which I did not put into the table. That is not a valid color. And if I go to the browser and I go to historical. Looks like it did not add it. Oh, weird. Insert into. Um, case I'm gonna and I'm gonna um, this is how you troubleshoot queries okay I'm gonna echo the query um and put it in historical if it wasn't there already okay oh if it wasn't in the historical table already no, well, it's not going to be. You know what? Um, I don't know if I meant... Oh, right, because it was trying to catch... But I put timestamps, so what I'll do is I'll always... Oh, right, because if it's equal to not a valid color... Yeah, okay, well, this is... N right, oh, well, never mind. I was gonna say you echo it out and then you and then you put it into PHP MyMin and look at the result. But in reality there's no problem. It's because it was in the else statement. So Alright, I'm always gonna add everything into the in this case I'm my thing here says inserting items typed and typed to history table if it wasn't there already meant that, you know, if somebody kept typing the same color, we were gonna add, only add it once. Um, but because I put the date and timestamp so you can get an idea of what gets typed in when, uh, we'll just add, we'll change that so that we always insert items into the history table so that we know what was typed. Alright, so if I type purple, and I should get, uh, function name must be, no. Is there a function name? Oh, dollar, that's silly. Haha. <laughs> Can't we can't call a function? You can't call a. That was just saying fatal. You know, function name must be a string. Um, anyway, so purple. All right, now if I go back to browser, 
and I go to my PHP class. There's still nothing in the historical table. Why is that? So it's historical. All right, so we are going to do this, and then I'll get to see. take the copy of that and I'll paste it into SQL. Right, of course no database was selected. But so here. You have an error. Right near color. Oh, I copied BG color? Wait, what did the preview say? The preview said white. So how come when I copy this... Why is it pasting BG color? When I'm actually copying... It's also reloading the page every time I click the tab, which is rather annoying. Um, but anyway. Alright, so insert into color. Alright, I'm just going to then change. I wonder if there's a setting to keep it from refreshing. Tools. Hmm. Yeah, you know what, I can, I can look at this another time. I'm just curious. Anyway, all right, so SQL. I have an error. Insert into historical. Really? see something. Alright. Never mind, I'm such a moron. The uh, column name doesn't get quoted. So if I did that, it would work. Um, yeah. And I'm actually going to delete this from here. And then what I'll do is I'll go back to internal preview. Uh, go back to the editor, coming out the echo line. Say purple. Not about color. Sorry, I meant to go to browse. And then PHP class. Still didn't. Oh, because I didn't change it in the code. I just changed it. Okay. There we go. And it says Eastern. Um, actually, no, it's not. It looks like it's... My, why does it say midnight? Weird. <laughs> As you can see in the clock, it's 11.42, not 12.42. Wednesday, July 7th. Um, and it says that it's Friday, July 8th. has an hour later. Eh, whatever. Um, okay. I don't know why it's saying that, but Regardless, you have historical. Now, if I go and I do, I think I made blue a valid color, didn't I? Okay. If I go back to the browser, okay, so that's how you do it. OK, 
Okay, so then the exercise is to do the demo and plus add the option to view the historical entries in a list. And like I said earlier, um, what you may want to do is, I mean, you can do the demo, you can do the exercise in the same way I did the demo, plus add the option to view the historical entries, or you can do it where you um, where you read the database table, the lookup table once, build an array from that lookup table. That'll um, also get you using uh, for each loops and that kind of stuff. And then basically reconstruct the array, but construct it from the database. Okay, because then what you have the option to do down the line is for your inserts when you insert it into the database, it's as if you're updating the array. Um, but in either case, uh, you just cut down on the number of queries that you do the number of select queries if you reconstruct the array. Um, however, uh, not really, because if you hit the page again, you're reconstructing the array on the second page hit. Um, if you constructed the array and put it in a session, which we'll talk about down the line, um, then it's always there for that particular user. So, anyway, that is the exercise. This was a fairly um, lengthy unit um, because uh, MySQL is a pretty, uh, pretty good topic to cover. I believe you have the foundational elements leading up to the time, so I think it was ready to talk about MySQL, this particular unit. And uh, go ahead and, and do the exercise and post anything that comes up along the way. Feel free to post it in the forum, and uh, we'll address it then. Uh, with that, I will see you in the next unit.